It is not a machine, though the precision of its mechanics can draw some admiration. Propelled by a unique movement, graced with a singular drive, it has a personality of its own. It was born from a special bond. Crafted over years with infinite patience and utmost care, listening to every tick, going over every move again and again to build a trust like no other, the kind of trust that allows you to push further, higher, always kind of trust that can transcend any challenge. Bainbridge is a fully integrated family of real estate companies who have developed and acquired more than 43,000 units representing $7.5 billion in transactions since inception, with over 650 associates nationally. Bainbridge engages in virtually every step of the real estate process, from development and construction, acquisition and disposition, to asset management and third-party property management of multifamily real estate. Bainbridge is the 10th largest multifamily developer and the 14th largest multifamily builder in the United States. Our team of experienced and knowledgeable professionals is devoted to creating exceptional living experiences for all of our residents and building lasting, mutually beneficial relationships with our partners and clients. To learn more, visit www.bainbridgecompanies.com. It is not a machine, though the precision of its mechanics can draw some admiration. Propelled by a unique movement, graced with a singular drive, it has a personality of its own. It was born from a special bond. Crafted over years with infinite patience and utmost care, listening to every tick, going over every move again and again, to build a trust like no other, the kind of trust that allows you to push further, higher, always, the kind of trust that can transcend any challenge.
A very good afternoon and welcome to the Winter Equestrian Festival and our uh, Friday class, $62,500 Bainbridge uh, 150 class coming up for you as part of this uh, Rolex week. And uh, Rolex, uh, for those that are not aware, of course, are uh, also supporting the uh, four majors throughout the season as well. Delighted to have those on board, the Dutch Masters, Ark and Spruce Meadows and CHI Geneva as well that make up the Rolex Grand Slam of show jumping, considered within the sport to be the ultimate challenge. And supporting to a fantastic range of some of the best Grand Prix venues around the world throughout the year. So looking forward to this being part of that once again here in Wellington. And of course, tomorrow is going to be the Saturday night for the Rolex Grand Prix $500,000 class. Why does that tie into this class as well? Because this is the remaining qualifier for those going into that as well. Top 10 uh, out of this class also going forward to tomorrow night. We went through yesterday with uh, Adequate WEF Challenge Cup with the top 30 through there. Our remaining 10 come out of this class, and uh, we are in for a big field here. 70, 7-0 seven uh, is what's coming up here. So it's going to be a, a settle into the afternoon for this one. And alongside me is Danny Walburn, multiple Grand Prix winner here in Wellington. She's won around the world, Shanghai to everywhere else. <laughs> Danny, lovely to see you once again. Thanks um, for having me. We're, we're, we're settling in for the afternoon. We are. It's going to be a long haul, but it's going to be some really exciting jumping. We've got great combinations. It's a speed class. And, of course, people vying for those last 10 spots for tomorrow night's Grand Prix. Absolutely. And, as you can see, we've had the media in from all around the world. Uh, we've got plenty of people jetting in. We've got local media in, too. We've had uh, a host of uh, the big uh, channels in all week as well, getting footage to uh, build up to tomorrow night's class as well. So looking forward to how that all plays out. Again, loving the tension of the big class on the Saturday night and the concluding part of the Winter Equestrian Festival. Who will be a part of it? We will see. Uh, Jimmy Serrano kicks us off in this uh, one round competition with uh, Cachillo Z. Ben Mayer goes early with uh, Exit Remo, as does Peter Fredrickson, Rodrigo Pessoa, Dalida, Gregory Wathley, uh, Daniel Coyle, first six. You could stop there. That's that's, yeah, that's top class. That's some fast <laughs> people right in the first few. Uh, Rene Dittmer of Germany, uh, Grand Prix winner here back in December. Christian Kukuk, second yesterday into the Grand Prix qualifier. Uh, Alex Volpi, Gracieux de Bachy, also placed last year in the Rolex Grand Prix, as was Roberto Turan. Their second spot for him goes uh, into that first dozen. Then on to to uh, Shane Sweetnam, Arundel de Flot. As I say, a number of riders that have also qualified yesterday, so they'll be bringing out different horses today to take a spin at the prize money. Uh, Luis Francisco de Azevedo and uh, Colin, also a rider that's been uh, up there in the top five for the Grand Prix before now. Uh, Bliss here is with some new horses this season with uh, Christian's Cash this time around. Now Nasa going to uh, Igor, his uh, longtime Grand Prix ride. Natalie Dean, Shadora Lady, and Australia there with Scott Keach. Further in, we had yesterday's winner, Connor Swale, goes with Gamble this time. Now, an interesting week for him because he's, I gather, not going forward for the Grand Prix. Won the qualifier yesterday. And so uh, he's going after the money here. Battle cry for Tiffany Foster. May well be her Grand Prix ride. We'll see what happens there as well. Oh, it's a few that are going to be creeping in here. Ben Mayer, Ginger Blue, I think, yeah. will be going in that direction as well. And uh, Jimmy Toronto's second ride then comes up. Simon McCarthy, gotcha. Erin Ballard, hero, again, uh, potentially to go towards that Grand Prix. Keen O'Connor, Eve Dwee. Uh, Mimi Gotchman, McLean Ward, First Lady. Remember McLean and First Lady uh, winning the WEF Challenge Cup just the other day, then went on to win the Grand Prix as well. Uh, Laura Kraut and uh, long established Kung Fu. Richard Vogel of Germany, Dream Star 1 for last year's Rolex Grand Prix winner. Now NASA goes late, and uh, then we'll keep you up to date as we'll come right the way down to Bliss Hears on her second ride to complete our 70 in this class. First of two for several, and uh, they do get two spins in this for a number of riders. And again, we'll see what their strategy is then for heading into Saturday night. All depends on how it goes here. Uh, $62,500 in the prize run, so uh, there's plenty to go at here too. For Jimmy Toronto, that starts us off with the Ice Lou Incorporated and Jet Show Stables of Wellington's Koshio Z, a 10 year old gelding by uh, Canaan for uh, Jimmy. Uh, course designer, once again, is Guillermo Jorge and, uh, of uh, Brazil, based here in uh, Wellington, Florida, too. And uh, as I say, one round class, table A, so faults and time are your. Uh, deciding factors in terms of technicality but uh, basically let's put it simply your quickest clear is going to be your winner here this afternoon and there's certainly going to be a few of those amongst this top class field as well uh, total of 12 fences on the course Danny you've been having a look at it what what did you glean from that you know what actually I think it's a little soft for today oh. I, I'm a little bit surprised oh. actually by Guy's uh, course we'll have to see I mean I think a lot of people on some really good horses 
They're going to be, we know they're going to be very fast, especially when they're going for prize money. Those who are not qualified trying to grab those last qualifying spots. But I was surprised, actually. The course is pretty straightforward. Um, I'll take you guys through it as our first one begins. But I was a little bit surprised. And I think some of the riders also were saying they almost wished it was a little bit stronger and then uh, that they could... You know, t worry about the jumping, and here I think it's going to be a real race. I, I've been here before, and then it's completely gone the other way. That's so true. Yeah. So we never know. You know, one way that it looks, it doesn't mean that that's actually it, how it it's, is. It's exactly, yeah, I hear that when they walk Alan Wade's course as well. Like, oh, where is oh, it? Oh, okay. he's got you. Don't worry. Yeah. All right, uh, so it starts off the left here by the in gate. Oxer, four, five, six, seven, eight. He does the eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Does the seven, so eight and seven right off the bat. Right hand turn now to the Lugano Diamonds double. Oxer vertical one stride. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to the plank. One, two, three, four, five. Very patient there on the six to the orange. Inside turn here. Roll back to this little lattice. And then left handed turn around the gazebo. Long run down to the Oxer vertical. Short two stride, yeah, you can see very short. Yep. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Down to number nine. Then roll back on the skinny. It's the black skinny. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We may see some nines there. One stride vertical oxer. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think he does the seven coming home. And uh, good solid round to start us out. Absolutely. 62 74 there. And uh, Jimmy Toronto going clear with Coach Shio Z. to say one round competition. So that will automatically go to the top of the leaderboard. But it would have done whatever the score was. Yes, uh, it would. They've got to beat it. But it's a good one to be up there as a zero score. 62 74 for uh, US rider Jimmy Toronto. World 25. He's been world number one. Peter Fredrickson of uh, Sweden now. SV of Room de la Pomme Z. We'll see what he chooses to do. Jimmy did those kind of leave outs up the first line. And Jimmy is quick. I don't say that he was uh, lightning fast, but he's certainly putting on the pressure for yeah. everyone else to kind of come catch him. Our next three riders have actually all been world number one at some point as well, just to show you the quality of the field. Does Bain. the nine. And then seven. So he does nine and seven. Jimmy did eight and seven. Again, I think we're going to see a lot of variation. This horse yeah. may be having a little bit of a smaller stride than Jimmy's had. Seven. Patient here. He does eight on that curve. I didn't count what Jimmy did. We just got tight up there at the left side as well on yeah. the turn. He was already on that turn, wasn't he? Exactly. He slows up a little bit in the two. And then he does seven where Jimmy did eight, <sighs> but unfortunately has the back pole. Perhaps because of that was a little bit off it. It is a Liverpool aiming right into the stands. And then the horses kind of know they have to turn on the backside, so they cut across it. And then steadies up to the last. We may see a six coming down that last line. Okay. 65-47 uh, uh, there for Pedro Ferrickson and SV of Room de la Pomme compared to Jimmy Toronto's 62-74. Long way to go in this yet. Uh, he's also Peter Fredrickson pre-qualified because he'd be an individual. Individ <sighs> Should I try that again? <laughs> he'd be a medalist from the Olympic Games <laughs> individually. Yeah, I put go. it in a different set of <laughs> set of words and it might work. Uh, the man with the number one spot at that uh, Games in Tokyo was Ben Mayer, and the uh, British rider today with uh, Pamela Wright and Charlotte Roster's Exit Remo, the gelding by San Remo for uh, Ben. First of two for him. He'll be in a little later with Ginger Blue as well for the current uh, world number two. Again, Ben's been dominating these classes all season long here. He was out of Wellington the last couple of weeks. He was over in Europe and yeah. up in Ocala. But he's back here now for this finale week. And I think he means business. Let's see what he does. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nice and simple. Of course, clearly having a very big stride, that eight to seven working out, even patient for him. Now the ox are vertical. Seven easy. I want to see if anyone chooses to do five across that middle. We'll see. Yeah. 
So you're riding quite steady in the six down the hill. Jumps a little bit hesitation there, kind of as it takes off, lands a bit right. Ben then has to pick up the pace a little bit again. Takes the big one in. Oop. Great skip step there yes. by the horse. What an athletic move to help himself back up. Gets a good left to right angle shot on that. Does the nine. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Patient all the way home in seven. Moving, but again, just a little bit behind. Jimmy was quite quick. He was, 62.74, and uh, so into second so far. We've only had three gone, but 65.42 there for Ben Mayer and Exit Remo. As you say, uh, Jimmy Tarano's time, 62.74 from that point of view. So uh, Jimmy, Jimmy meant business. Yeah, he did. I think he came out here with a mission and uh, I think still wanting to qualify, and uh, he laid it down. Rodrigo Pessoa, de Lida. Uh, for the Artemis Equestrian Farm for this uh, mare by De Montesemi. Again, a, a new one for him coming into uh, this season, the 10-year-old. And again, has really been aimed at these classes so far this season, not yet into the, the big Grand Prix from that point of view. He's got uh, Major Tom to aim at the Grand Prix this week as well. Yeah, I believe he maybe won a two-star Grand Prix on the west coast of Florida with this horse recently. Over over in Sarasota. Yeah, I think he might. Oh, so I, yeah. I think he might have. They did what? They did. Yeah, they have been going well. Yeah. So uh, been a good amount, but like you said, just developing it up to this level, not been aiming this particular horse yeah. at the five-star Grand Prix level, but can be quick with this Diamant. And this is a pretty quick horse across the ground, doesn't waste much time. Steady's up for the two. Stays on it for the seven. Neat turn back here. Just pops one in there at the end. Gets over that. Steadies up a lot for the seven at the end. Yeah. Very good round. Good round. Uh, yeah, 65-80. Good round. Um, was second in the uh, 155 Grand Prix up in Ocala, up at WEC just a few weeks ago to put the record straight on that. But he did have a good run uh, up into some of the shows across here in Florida. Certainly been uh, keeping himself busy. But, yes, he won with Chile in the Grand Prix, two-star Grand Prix up at uh, oh, okay. Sarasota the other day as well. And uh, so uh, we move on to uh, Gregory Wathley, Fahrenheit Devar on a warm afternoon yes. uh, the, uh, <laughs> stallion, the stallion by windows vendor Kostevelt for uh, Gregory Wathley again staying truly well really world-class field um, here this time many of the world's top 30 with us over the uh, next two days left of competition uh, for the five star of course we'll be here on Sunday with the two star Grand Prix Nat national Grand Prix as well Ooh. I think we've got, got lots to get through on that one as well so uh, we're going to finish strong here in Wellington too uh, but uh, lovely to have the former Arkan Grand Prix winner and European medalist with us. I say he's been actually over in California uh, throughout the winter, so he hasn't actually been back to Europe much either. Finished Europe in last year in fine style, winning the Lyon World Cup qualifier. Looking like Gregory's maybe taking a little bit more of a patient approach to today's class. This horse has a big stride, a bit big kind of lopier stride, so he's getting down there easy but not looking like he's trying to be lightning fast. Again, doing this inside turn, needing to stay neat with the track. A little stumble on the landing side. But as you can say, look, looking like Gregory wanting to develop this one and just have a super nice round. It is just nine years of age. And today's spec, of course, at meter 50 built to the maximum of that spec. Has A, has B coming out of the double front pole of that. Looked like he jumped in okay. Uh, just had that on the way up. So four up there into fifth place, 73-72, steady around for Gregory Wathley and uh, Fahrenheit. Deva now for Gregory as we'll move on to uh, Ireland and Ireland have been dominating in fact they won the two-star uh, qualifier earlier on as well with Richie Maloney top of that class as well so Ireland won 
I think they've yesterday. won every class. I think they've won every class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're dominating. <laughs> Someone said it to me earlier in the day, however, and I said, yeah, but they've got a lot of riders, so their odds are sort of better than everybody else. <laughs> They've got a lot of very good riders, yes. is the thing. Uh, Daniel Coyle now on the 10-year-old uh, Jasper horse, which has been really moved up this year as well. Uh, Jasper is a Dutch bread gelding by Felez de Muse for uh, long time now owner Ariel Grange. Daniel, he's been winning classes up in Ocala as well, headed down here for the final week of the Winter Equestrian Festival too, part of the winning team last week as well for the Nations Cup. Just a little, a little stuttery to start off with. Yeah, but I think he's on the move. Yeah. I think this horse, uh, he's certainly thinking to be quick today. Doing one more stride there, but again, I don't think this horse necessarily having the biggest stride, but it is very quick across the ground. So utilizing the speed, not so much the stride length. Moves up here, trusting the carefulness of the horse. Goes on the inside. Very good ride there. You could see use of the outside leg to guide the horse around the turn. Steady's up a little bit for this short double. Doesn't work out short for him at all. Actually has to leg through there. Stays on the inside track. Ooh, just slinks over that oxer. Little bit of a touch, stays up, and then gets real deep to the skinny, but clears it. And he is adding leg. The horse is trying. And then he steadies up a little bit here at the end. Very quick. But not quick enough. Not quick enough. 64-39 into second so far for Daniel Coyle and uh, Jasper. I say not done too much together so far. They were into June last year and then just really uh, getting back going into uh, 2024. So uh, for them, they're uh, back in the ring, back going for uh, Daniel. René Dittmann now of Germany. This is Mario Delorier's Felina de Septon, the uh, mayor by Jensen, the uh, German rider. I think this is gonna this is gonna be a really exciting class. For yeah. those you watching, this is gonna be a real treat to see proper speed riding at a high level from a lot of top riders. I think uh, we've already seen some fast rounds, and I believe it's just gonna get faster and faster. Does a nine. This horse not so big. I don't think he's thinking to do any major leave outs but just wants to be quick on his track. And luckily the horse not wasting much time in the air. That'll help him. But it is a beautiful jumper. Does the inside turn. Gets a little bit bogged down in that turn, kind of landed straight and then turned versus kind of turning midair does one more stride sort of between those jumps in the turn. I saw a number of the riders, even though you don't normally walk, I mean, a lot of Europeans do, not so many Americans walk distances between rollback turns. I think Kent maybe is one American who does do that. But uh, I saw Henrik von Eckermann and a number of European riders sort of walking the distance for a number between those rollback turns, which is a unique thing. <laughs> 67.96, it's uh, René Dittmer and uh, Felina de Septon going into fifth place there. But uh, again, uh, you, you know, from that point of view, it gives you a gauge, it, you see what you're aiming at. And again, if you're coming on a quite a tight turn, as you know, you're coming a bit blind at times. Yeah, exactly. I think where's my times, spot? Yeah, those roll those rollback turns can be very blind. Uh, and when they're, you know, seven, eight strides, that is worthy of walking. It, yeah. it can really help gauge where your track needs to be. And uh, if you know that you're on an inside track, maybe you can even steady up and not worry about just kind of keeping the foot on the gas. So uh, take us on to uh, Germany now, and uh, second yesterday with Mumbai into that uh, WEF Challenge Cup is Christian Kukuk, the uh, European medalist for Germany before now, with uh, Madeleine Winterschultz's uh, Checker 47. has been a, a very good Grand Prix ride for him, for the uh, gelding by Comilfo. Again, really, he's got a couple of choices this week for being in there with Mumbai and Checker this week, both Grand Prix horses. Yeah, I think he's got his top kind of string here with him. And of course, uh, thanks to Madeline Vinter Schultz, who is a huge supporter mm. of this sport. Um, she's been an owner and supporter of multiple riders, Ludger as well over the years. And she's just a tremendous supporter. And it's nice to see that she's got some horses competing in the US right now. <laughs> Little skinny plank, which hasn't caused a problem so far. Just a little drift out and straighten up. Yeah, but actually, I think it kind of helped him. Yeah. It created a little bit more space. And looking like Christian using this round just as a setup for checker. 
And uh, we'll see who he opts to use in the Grand Prix tomorrow, knowing that he is qualified from being second on Mumbai in the Qual Challenge Cup yesterday. Looking like he's just using this as a nice setup, going around, not worrying about trying to necessarily win this class, but the, getting the horse to jump in a beautiful shape, working on rideability, getting the horse around his leg, around these turns, and just setting it up beautifully. As you can see, the shape of the horse really in top form. Beautiful jump out there. Just keeps it patient, gets right to the base, softens as he takes up, and the horse really jumps back and around that vertical. Yeah, going to be time full stride in there, 83, 21. But like you say, that gives the good indicator that that is probably, that is going to be his Grand Prix ride tomorrow. That would be my educated That'd be, guess. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Can't say for sure, but seven what time. it looked like. He, he wouldn't be doing that for no reason. <laughs> no. Uh, so seven time there for Christian Kukuk and Checker 47 uh, and to uh, Alex Volpe now and uh, she rides her own Gris Yudipashi going by uh, Tinker's Boy she herself placed in the top 10 last year in the Rolex Grand Prix as well now we see how they fare this afternoon again say several here also running for qualifying those with the pressure off like uh, Christian Kukuk it's yeah. like, I'm qualified I'm done I had a good result yesterday just getting the horse into the rhythm, whereas yeah. Alessandra here looking like she's going for it. Yeah. Got time to beat from Jimmy, 62-74. was our first one out of the gate and proving to be quite quick. Beautiful jump there. She had a little bit of space as she took off, but the horse really jumped a great oxer. Nice shot here, gets the inside turn. She really used her eye around that turn. It's a very important thing to sort of look where you want to go, not where you don't want to go. And Alessandra there just mid-air of that orange oxer, looking towards the other one. Steadies up nice here for the two. Stays on that inside track. Again, using her eye very well. Look at this tight, tight turn back to the skinny. Oh, unfortunately, losing the front end of the horse a little bit. And had the skinny down and then jumps up high coming out of that double and unfortunately having that as well. Puts on a score of 865-87 for Alessandra Volpi and Gracio de Bashi. We'll put them into ninth place at the moment, but uh, further down the order takes them further away from that qualifying slot uh, for tomorrow as well. So I say there's still 10 to come out of this class yet. Uh, that'll be the top 10 place not already qualified, as I understand it. That's what I think, but yeah. uh, that's the, rules are, the rules are complicated for qualifying. It's not so simple, so that, that's we'll, how we'll, I avoid. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll avoid discussing it entirely <laughs> because we're not sure. I'm sticking my neck out. I'm no, sticking right. my oh, neck out. Oh, you're doing it. I'm right. sticking my neck out. Okay, well, that's... We'll stick to that. Roberto Turan, DSP Cala, second uh, previously in that Rolex Grand Prix as well. Uh, finishing into the top ten at the Pan American Games last year too with a Dezuktov. DSP Cala now, the uh, mare that's uh, German bred by Kaskeni the second. Again, it's really been uh, a terrific sport now to Dezuktov and looking to maybe get up to the top of the string eventually. Yeah, absolutely. This has been a really good mount for him. And actually, Roberto... Had uh, actually, I believe he has a broken nose. As oh, does he? Riding. Yes. Ew. He had a, a little tumble last week, and uh, I saw him earlier in the week, and he had some bruising, and he said his nose was broken. So pretty impressive that he's out here just competing anyway. And that's the thing about equestrians. We're tough. No, I, was say, I was letting you say that, but it's true. <laughs> We're tough. It is true. We're Absolutely. So you got to be tough. You got to be tough. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's not an easy game out there. No. Sometimes it uh, can't always be perfect. You whoop, see, oh. No, it was just losing the momentum around there and yeah, knew it. Yeah, exactly. The horse got a little bit stuck and bogged down in the turn, and he wanted to add leg, and then the horse kind of didn't react right away on the one stride. But he did it. The horse was a little bit one stride late reacting, and then by the time he tried to get there, he just wasn't going to get there and realized, nope, got to make a little circle. And then just a couple of problems after that incident. But... Up. Well, there we go. 12 jumping and three for time after all of that for uh, Roberto Terran and uh, for uh, DSP Callas going a little bit further down into 10th uh, place for them in the end. So, 
Michaela Langmeyer will move swiftly on to the 23-year-old. And uh, with uh, Shadina this time for the uh, Rafty Farm. Again, really just started to move up into the five-star Grand Prix again this year with her list of rise, this and Mimosa. Yeah, and she's had a really, really solid year. I believe she's a couple out from qualifying, so I know she'd probably like to try to try, try to get in there from today's class. So let's see how fast she tries to go on Shadina. This has been a great horse for her. And she's had a lot of success in some speed classes over the past year or so. Former ride of Molly Hay from the USA, yeah. as well as Abigail McArdle. And by one of my favorite stallions, Canthargos. <laughs> so really elastic, gummy, sporty horses. And you see that in this one as well. See, she also has the little white breathe right sort of strip on the nose. It's a flare strip, and uh, that just helps keep the nostrils open that they can get the maximum amount of oxygen intake as possible while they're galloping around. I used to use them on my horses as well. Just want the little bit of extra help that we can get. Nice slice there at the oxer. Steadies up a little bit here. So looking like she's going a little bit conservative here, stretching out there, has the one down already. Steadies up to the last, gets over that. Uh, we'll have to settle with that one down. Yeah, finishing on the 469.18 there for Michaela Langmaier and Shadina. Yes, I was just, just going through who qualified yesterday, et cetera. Yeah, she was sitting in 34th yesterday, so just outside that, as you say, and I think probably going to be that today. Um, from that point of view. In fact, highly unlikely not to yeah. be in that top unfortunately. 10, unfortunately, with the fence down there. As we go to the uh, world number one, Henrik von Eckerman and the portfolio horses, uh, Glamour Girl, the mayor by uh, VDL Zorocco Blue. Now, he was a bit further down yesterday, but he's pre-qualified yes, as the is. world champion yes, exactly. and world cup champion. He's the champion of the world currently, yeah. <laughs> but we'll leave it at that. Interestingly, world number one doesn't pre-qualify you. It's funny. I had that conversation actually with someone yesterday, and we were saying, yeah, but he's number one in the world. Of course, he qualifies. I said, no. no. That is not an automatic reason for qualification, but uh, his just championship medals just are. Just putting that into the ether for, for the Federation's yeah, listening. In, in case they're listening. <laughs> if you're out there listening. Well, no, feel well seems like a fair, fair point that the person point. who's most consistent in the whole world should be able to. For if you're world number one at that point, I feel, yeah. But anyway, However, he's, he's in. looking like he is he's trying to win it. this class on Glamour Girl today. So let's take a look at what he's up to. I mean, he does this amazing. I remember him doing some fantastic round on this horse. I think it was down in Mexico City last time around as well. It just does some. Steady's up there to the plank. This horse having a ton of blood. Great on the left angle. Wow, that's the fastest Oof. we've son seen yeah. anyone do that. And I saw him walk that a couple of times. I know he was thinking to make sure to get that number. Beautiful shot. Oh. No. And it's gone. He tried to slow up in the very short two. And Glamour Girl just had quite a lot of momentum through that double. And just not able to back up. He really tried to help her and slow her down, but she just, that momentum carried. And she just wasn't able to sort of jump on the hind legs and jump up and around the vertical. Just jumped into it. Here's the last. Look at that time. Yeah, it's going to be 60.85. Leading time so far from Jimmy Tirano is 62.74. But uh, Jimmy was clean. Fence down for Henrik von Eckermann and Glamour Girls. So it goes into sixth place on 60.85. But shows uh, what is available there if you can leave them all up. So exactly. Henrik von Eckermann, the world number one. Time is beatable. That we now know for sure. But the question is, can they do it? and leave the poles in the cups. Yeah, and as I say, there's a long way to go. We've got 70 in this <laughs> yeah. class. We're nowhere uh, already. near We're into the middle. Yeah. yeah, we've just done our first dozen, so we've got quite a lot to shake up in this yet. Uh, another one that we've seen do something similar in terms of big wins already is uh, Arendelle de Flut and uh, Shane Sweetnam of Ireland for the Seabrook LLC of uh, Illinois. Now, I, I expect a similar round off him because he will go with James Cunn Cruz for the Grand Prix. So Exactly. I think he's going to try to win this on this horse that has been great in speed classes. So he does the nice patient nine. Long stretch there in the seven. Just didn't quite get there. He moved up. 
and then looked like he thought he was there, and the horse just a little bit too far away, stretched to try to get over it, but no chance. And that is the excitement of a speed class, is that when they go for it and you add that little bit extra element of speed, wild things can happen that, you're, that are unexpected. You know, you, you think, well, they're used to going this fast and they can, they can do it, but the little bit extra speed makes another whole variable for the way that jumps and distances come up. It just doesn't always work out. When it does, you tend to win, but it doesn't always. And in the end, you know, if you don't try, you certainly don't win. So then looking like Shane just kind of eased up off yeah. the gas. He went around after the orange, just trying to finish up on a nice solid round. Does have that one down. Horse just look like he kicked back a little bit over the oxer. Clears the last. Leaves them on a score of eight at 73-19-8 there in its 12th place so far for Shane Sweet and Arendelle Leflot. Set off with purpose, but uh, unfortunately just didn't finish how they would want. So uh, not to be this time. And uh, Shane, though, with plenty to uh, get into action with this during this week as well as say he'll be back with James Can Cruz into the Grand Prix tomorrow as well. And now on to a mare that I used to ride. Gemma W. Daniel Blumen of Israel over the top stables. Uh, super horse, obviously well produced originally. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and uh, went on to win the likes of the Hampton Classic, the Toronto World Cup as well. So, yes. And I will say, having ridden her myself, I know how light she is in the mouth and how she can really turn on a dime. It can be such a fast horse. And uh, I think her turning ability is one of her strong suits. And again, this is a soft class for her. She's jumped to some of the biggest 160 classes in the world, and this is just 150. And I believe he's not qualified for the Grand Prix tomorrow and certainly trying to here. Clears that. And like I said, I think her strong suit is that she can kind of turn on a dime. Yeah. Yeah, they were 31st yesterday, so... Ugh. And one is down. She has... Coming out of the double, a little bit of a rub at the oxer at the end. And now he's looking like he's slowing up a tad. Knowing that he's not going to win the class and looking like maybe he is retiring anyway. Yeah, difficult one. So decides to retire there for uh, Daniel Blumen and uh, Gemma W. Knows they're out of the running at that point. I was about to say it's interesting because you've got, what, five clears so far. Okay, we've only had 12 gone. You don't feel the space in there either to sort of say, oh, I'll go steady and just get a nice clear in it. You, you've got to have a run at it. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, I think we're going to have, we're going to see at least the top 10 be clear in this yeah. class. We've already seen five and we're not that far down the list. So knowing that you have one down, I think you, you, in your head, in the back of your head, you're thinking no chance, Yeah. you know, save the horse for another day. So uh, Halle Grimes now and Chiquito PS for the Can We Keep It LLC of Texas. Now can the 21-year-old get herself into the right spot as well for that uh, big Saturday showdown? She'll certainly take a chase at this as well. Yeah. And this horse has a big stride, covers the ground here, gets the seven done easy. Steady's up here, a little bit of leg out, but again, big scopey horse. Stays on the inside track there. And then just gets there a little bit easy in that six strides, having the front pole of the orange and yellow oxer. It is a little bit pitched down the hill in that six, and we've seen it be very steady for people. Just looking like she just got there a little early. And then she is She's gonna pull up as well. Also calling it a day. Yeah, deciding to retire there for Hallie Grimes and Chicato PS. Again, if they're chasing for that qualification, or to be honest, even if the money in this class, as you know, there's five yeah. clears already, I'm I'm not going to make it. So. No, exactly. I mean, it's one thing if you have a horse and you're trying to use this as a training class, but it's looking like most people are either using it for the qualification or to try to win that prize money. And if you're off the clear already, you're, you know you're kind of out of yeah. both. And uh no need to waste any more jumps. There's plenty of jumping to do throughout the year. Molly Ash calling now, Lewisburg Farms uh, Birdie, and has actually been having a very good run too up at Ocala at the World Equestrian Center there. She had a nice Grand Prix win in there and finished second 
uh, two in a big class up there too. So she's been very much getting uh, tuned up and ready for this final few weeks here in Wellington. Yes, exactly. She's been a little bit easy all through season, not jumping the four and five stars so much. But like you said, teeing up in from Ocala and here now. She does the steady eight. She landed, moved up, and then kind of steadied up at the end for the eight. And has A coming into that double front pole of the Lugano Diamonds Oxer. Nice jump here. Slinks over that. Again, real agility test when they have to jump kind of on the turn like that. She's putting in a really nice round here. She had that one down kind of early at the first double, but in the end, jumped the rest really, really well. So just on the four there for uh, Molly Ashkoli and uh, Birdian, and so we'll put them into eighth place overall, 66.70. So yes, not, not too far away for time from that point of view, but uh, not to be for uh, Molly this time. So we uh, remain with uh, our leading combination being uh, Jimmy Toronto and Kushio Z. Daniel Cole in second, Ben Mayer in third at this point. Luis uh, Francisco de Azevedo now for the uh, Brazilian rider. And uh, this time around is going to be with the uh, longtime partner of Colin for the Santa Cecilia stables. This horse having a lot of blood can also be very fast. Winning partner of his. Let's see what they choose to do. Yeah. Grand Prix winners last year in trying. He actually was second in the Rolex Grand Prix here, but that was back in 2018. Yeah, with that a horse was a called while Comic. Back. Yeah. Which many will remember. I remember that horse. Keeps moving here around that turn. Beautiful shot there. So looking like he's trying to be pretty quick. Again, this horse has a big stride, really backs up great there. Very tight turn back on this. Ooh. He kept pushing there, but actually that helped keep the energy level up on takeoff. Big jump and effort coming out. Steady's up here to the last. Looks pretty good. Yeah. Don't think he's going to catch our leader, but good solid clear round. Yeah, it is 64-46, and uh, they're clear for Luis Francisco de Zavedo, and uh, Colin will go into third place so far. And uh, so goes uh, just ahead of Ben Mayer and exit Remo. So slots in there between Daniel Coyle and Ben Mayer to go into third at this point. Bliss here is now for the Bridgeside Farms, and this is Christian's Cash. Stallion by Christian 25 and out of a mare by Cash and Carry. So there you go. That's There's <laughs> his name. There you go. It's it's all there laid out for you. Sometimes the clues are there. Yeah. <laughs> you had to take a guess of his parents. You yeah. didn't have a good chance. Um, and again, for her, again, it's been building a new set of uh, horses up. Of course, she had those wonderful successes with Antidote de Mars. But uh, now on to uh, a newer set coming through. Nine-year-old. Uh, Going to be really exciting. So she's had two really nice horses here this week that are just... Now, this season, I think, going to be on their breakout season. Yeah, exactly. Nine, I think the other one was 11, really just right into the peaking age. Yeah. She jumped beautiful round yesterday in the Challenge Cup. I think she might have been clear with a time fault yesterday, I think, if I remember. Yes, she was. Quality star Z. 17th place. Normally, I got a terrible memory. No, well, there so. you go. I'm, I'm <laughs> sitting here with the stats alongside me occasionally. It just takes me a second to get to it, but I'm, <laughs> Glad that I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to work in the actual facts of this. That's good. I like that. We like, we like to be backed up We're by hardcore to be data. <laughs> it's looking good here. Again, this horse just nine. Looking like she's being neat. She is qualified for tomorrow, so maybe just wanting to develop this one. Yeah. 
not thinking that she needs to be super high up, but obviously wanting a good round. Goes, does the inside turn here. Steadies up. But like you said, I think she has a couple of really nice yeah. ones that are all coming up to this level now. Gave herself a bit of space there coming back to that one. Again, you, like we say, you've got to have that balance between chasing the time and, and just risking it. But uh, oh. there we she go. She gave herself space yeah. there. Maybe she was just still trying to make the adjustment with the mouth as she took off and a little bit of a touch at the last, but that one stayed up. 71.46 and finishing on four there for 11th place for Bliss Hears and Christian's Cash. Like we say, she was uh, on that just one time for yesterday. But again, she's working with a nine-year-old, so she's she's not over trying to overface too much in no, this class. No, exactly. I think not, uh, not trying to push those buttons too hard just yet. But a solid round. Now, that's uh, and the Evergate Stables, Igor van der Wittemore. He's uh, right, actually, right the way through to the Olympic Games, winner of the Queen's Cup at Spruce Meadows last year several time winner of million dollar classes here in the united states he knows what a big win looks like yes I'm now sure again he'd like another one yeah it's going to be interesting to see which i mean actually i've seen igor plenty of times go a nice swift round slick around there to to play a part in this yeah i mean this is a very naturally quick horse yeah it's not a big horse it's very agile very athletic a lot of blood but again uh curious if niall uh is just thinking about the setup today. I'm not sure if he's qualified or not. So does the nice eight. Again, looking like he's trying to be quick enough here. Yeah, had eight faults yesterday with Jiminy Cricket, so further down on 30. Okay. Uh, about 36, something like that, 38. So he might be thinking about today's and he goes inside very quick here again like you said this horse naturally just very quick so yeah. he doesn't need to necessarily run it off its feet he just wants to keep his track short let the horse do what he does best which is jump carefully use the natural speed so there he goes out does the one more but then he's already angling back for the turn very smart rid smartly ridden there by Niall knowing that uh, if he opens him up too much and maybe does the leave out he risks having it down and then having a much wider turn. So I think that was a very smart move. This was a very well executed, yeah. well thought out strat strategic ride. Finishing into fourth place there, 65.09 for Nal Nasa and Igor van der Vita Moore. Uh, so that could well put him in qualifying. We will see, but a nice round and exactly um, as we sort of envisaged, which e is nice. Exactly. Nice word choice. Envisaged. I don't try and say it too often because I'll get <laughs> fall over it. Uh, Natalie Dean is a nice, easy one to say. Uh, the Marigold Sport Horses of California's Shadora Lady, the mare by uh, Chaco Blue for Natalie. Again, being up there in the five-star Grand Prix this season as well. And uh, for her, would be looking to be uh, a big part of tomorrow if she can. She was 24th in qualifying yesterday, so she's in. So she's in. So now just thinking about today's class as a standalone event. She takes a little bit of a different approach. She came really off that inside turn left versus really angling one right to left. But again, this is a very hot, bloody horse. Keeps the energy. Gorgeous jumper, though. You can see the horse takes her really right to the base, and then when she gets there, it opens up. It jumps beautifully up in front and then opens up behind. Very careful. Almost a little bit of a bend here. And then goes around, I think maybe just getting to know this horse a little bit. And looking very solid. A little bit loses the balance, a tiny bit there. But no trouble at all, at all for Chidora Lady. And there she just took off a little bit on the angle and the horse kind of lost some energy on takeoff, not able to get across the back pole. Just jumped up high over the Liverpool but not exactly across and then just a little bit deep coming into the double and has it down in front. Clears the last, however. 
So 69 to two, Lois two fences finishing on eight there for uh, Natalie Dean and uh, Shadora Lady this time around. Like I say we'll see her tomorrow into the Grand Prix as well. Looking forward to that. That was with a coat at Emmy yesterday, which I would imagine is going to be her Grand Prix ride. I would assume so. I would take a bit of a spin at that. Kelly Cruciotti van der Veen now. Gideon for the uh, Serenity uh, Show Stables. Gideon now 10 years of age, gelding by Super Trooper Deness, which actually was a horse to McLean Ward Road at the end of its career, was produced in the UK. Uh, with Nikki Bolter, if I remember right. Yes. would be a name that would ring a lot with some, but uh, she did a very good job with that horse. And then, as I say, eventually headed out to the U.S. Yeah, and Super Trooper, super interesting fact, has bred a little bit and only has 22 foals on the ground. Very small amount for a stallion for breeding. There we go, yeah. Quality. Quality, exactly. And they're all, like, you see them almost all in the sport. It's actually super yeah. impressive stats for a stallion. This one looks just like his dad. Yep. He's a beautiful black stallion. Watched him many, many times. Me too, in McLean here in the U.S. That's great. She's looking good so far. Gets a good shot there. She is on the move. I don't think she's quite on the leading pace. No, but it's a just a nice, well no. put together, good rhythm round so far. Exactly which is important if you want to stay up there. Takes a good one there. She really saw that early around the turn, and then she could sit up at the last minute to make sure that she had the balance. Gets over A, over B, one left to go. Not going to catch the leader, but a very solid round. Yep, it is going to be 66-63 into seventh place so far for Kelly Cruciotti, Van Der Veen, and uh, Gideon. So seventh spot for her at the moment still with uh, our leading score at the moment coming from Jimmy Serrano at 62.74. Pretty solid. We'll have to see. You said you seem pretty confident with your knowledge of the qualifying rules for today. I, uh, I'm curious if it's those within the top 10 placings that are not qualified or the top 10 going down the list. I will make sure it's 100%, but as far as I'm aware, it's just the top 10. So it's those within the top 10 placings that and then, have and not And then it goes back, goes to, back the, to, to the WEF. Yesterday's yeah. Yeah. So that is, that is a little bit of a specific, confusing thing. So they don't go 10 placings down. They take the top 10 and those within it. So if no one within the top 10 is qualified, back to the other. it goes back to yesterday's uh, and goes down the list from yesterday. That's As I understand why it. I will clarify it. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure that that's how it is, and uh, it's nice to clarify for the viewers here that it's not uh, just going to keep running down today's list. But let's take a look at Jordan Coyle. looking good so far again jump to five star grand prix on this horse chocolino steadies up a little bit here does the inside turn this is a lot bigger of a horse a little bit different mover than his other horse for gold but chocolino looking very good so far Makes the rollback. Great expression on this horse's face. Really ears forward. Really looking where he's going. Again, being efficient with his time, but not lightning, lightning fast. Just uh, setting up a nice round. There we go. Finishing uh, into eighth place so far. 67.39 for uh, Jordan Coyle and uh, Shakalino. And so they're going to eight spots so far with a uh, nice clear from them. So we've got nine combinations that have gone clear so far uh, for this one-round competition, but we're more looking at that top ten for qualifying. Luis Fernando Larrazabal, and uh, now for the uh, Venezuelan, uh, is going to be with uh, our next now, and that's going to be Baroness for Leanna Ablin.
Let's see what Luis can do. What is he going for? The time, 62.74 is that time to beat, set by our leadoff rider, Jimmy Toronto and Crucio Z. Yeah, Jimmy setting them a very good standard early on in the $62,500 class. Uh, Luis, one that does not hang around, so this might shake it up a bit as well. Yeah. But looking like he's being quick, but I don't know how fast. Let's see what he does through here. A little bit of a shape, so he's on the right to left bend. That helps set up this turn. A little kick out with the horse, just being extra careful over that vertical. Steadies up here. Beautiful jump. He stays out, does the eight, gets the left to right angle. Neat back, but not ultra, ultra quick on this turn. Looking like he's going for the steady clear. Slinks over A, gets over B. And a hard rub at the last, but luckily it stays up. So he'll get the clear, but a bit off that pace will end up in 10th at the moment. Time is 69.61 for Luis and Baroness. And here's our winning rider from the last two five-star classes. Can he make it a hat trick with his third win? No Absolutely. We'll see Connor Swale, the uh, world number 21 now of uh, Ireland. And uh, with Gamble, as you say, winner yesterday in that qualifier. And winner the day before. So I'm sure he'd like to make it three in a row. And he is not going to be jumping our five-star Grand Prix tomorrow night. So this is his last opportunity yes. in this five-star week. Gets the eight. Moves up for the seven. Beautiful jump there, however. Horse really kind of grabbed the ground and jumped up around that. Beautiful power. Clears this. Beautiful shot. In my opinion, Connor is really unbelievable natural feel. Look at that. Similar turn to Hendrick. And Henrik von Eckermann's turn there was amazing. Had one down later in the course, but his is looking, Connor's looking good Yeah, so he's far. looking very good so far. Beautiful shot there. Gets a good turn. If he stays on it, this is going to be quick. He's been very neat and efficient. Clears that. One left to go. And he's opting for the six. Can he leave it up? He does, but he doesn't catch him. No. No, 63-1-2. And, and so it's four. And he had one down, actually. Yeah. I didn't realize. No, it's four added in there as well. So 63-1-2 would have put him into second place there for uh, Connor Swale. And so Jimmy Toronto may, remains in the number one spot. Connor Swale and Gamble go into 12th place. And so, so on the four faults there. Paul O'Shea now of uh, Ireland keeps the flag flying here with the Equestrian Farms Emerald van der Voorhof to give him a shot uh, this week. Actually, this is a horse that he's ridden into some major five-star Grand Prix so far for the world number 92. This was his 46th yesterday. Oh, and this was his uh, winning mount out. No, was this his winning mount? Yeah, going back to yeah. the grass, yes. Week four? Week four. Week four, the week four, four Grand Prix. Very hard, there's only three clear in that Grand Prix and he won it on this animal. Like he's trying to be quick here today. Beautiful jump there at number Good turn, yeah. Super turn there back to the vertical.
Horse backs up nice there in that short double. Didn't ride too short for him. Stays on the inside track to this double. Clears the last, but uh, yep. still a little bit off that pace. But good clear. Goes to eighth place, 66-71 for Paul O'Shea and Emerald van Voorhof. So he has to wait and see. Um, clarified qualification, top 10 of those not already qualified. So if you have got those top 10 already qualified, we do go down on this class as well, okay. but we go down as far as 10 and that's it. And then it goes back to the WEF. Okay, so interesting. So a couple of little different things in there, but that is straight from the grand jury. So there you go. Okay, now we know for <laughs> sure. So they will go down the list to get 10 from today's class, not just those within the yeah. top 10. So that would be looking at the Jimmy Toranos, the Rodrigo Pessoas, those that were just outside qualifying yesterday, would be getting in today. If it stays as it, it is stays, right now. It, yeah. right, uh, there are 11 clear at the moment. Yeah. Be it Madly now of Switzerland's uh, Ammonia R for the uh, former World Cup champion. Now again, looking for to be a part of this. Such a stylish rider to be a part. Uh, we'd like to see. He had 12 yesterday, unfortunately, so was further down. And he's had one already yeah. now. He has number three down front pole of that natural wood oxer. And looking like he might, too, be calling it a day after having that one down. Yeah, so I think saying not going to work out today a bit madly. And uh, Muni at R60, so he decides uh, to retire for Bayat. So Short-lived attempt there. And so remains the top three as Jimmy Toronto, Cuchillo Z at 62.74, Daniel Coyle, Jasper 64.39, Luis Francisco de Azevedo and Colin on 64.46. So it would be good news for those two of those top three as well to get into uh, tomorrow as well. Daniel Coyle going well too previously, so uh, he will be playing a part and still quite a way to go yet. We've seen, what, 20, 26 of the 70 in total so far. So quite a little lot to come into this yet. As we go on to the second horse for uh, Alessandro Volpi. And uh, this time back with appearance. Uh, by Contagos. Alex on to the squads last year for the uh, US over into Europe, including in Falstabo. And this is a very fast horse. Great uphill balance, a lot of blood. Again, another Contargos that we're seeing. Let's see if this appearance will garner the clear. Good shot at one. Again, this horse, a lot of blood, not. Yeah taking too much time in the air. That'll help speed up her overall time. Can make a move inside. Yeah, yeah. Shifts, the, shifts left there. That helps set up the inside turn. Really on the left corner of that vertical. Stays within those flags, which is what the rule Requires. Gets over the double. She'll stay out here for the eight. That'll help angle back towards this. Ooh, she does one more stride there than maybe there was one less. Again, sometimes it just you just don't see it when you're making that turn. Drags and that one. Fortunately, having one. an A and B of the double. A little bit of trouble at the end of the course here. Leaves them on a score of uh, 8, 67, 42, two down for uh, Alessandro Volpi and uh, appearance into the latter part of the class. And uh, so two down for them at this time. And in fact, she's had um, eight on both her rides with Grashuda Pashi as well. So down into a similar spot. And uh, Tiffany Foster now, battle cry for the Arson Farms and uh, Kent Farrington. Highest ranked female rider in the world at the moment. Yeah, well, number 17 and uh, winner of the NetJets Grand Prix this season together with this horse. Won her uh, unbelievably first five-star Grand Prix last year on home ground in Vancouver in Langley, British Columbia. I did 
that was Atiba. So nice. That was her first five star. She's won lots of five star classes. She's gone to the Olympics several yeah, times. Yeah, she had never won a five star. But that was the five star Grand Prix. But it was so nice because it was right, right at home where she where she was competing as a kid. Aww. Yeah. I love that. It's a very yeah. Tiffany story. It's very yeah, lovely, it very family, very nice. Yeah, that is. And speaking of loving, I love this animal. Yeah. This is such a spectacular horse. It was so great to see her win the four star Grand Prix on him. I watched him last year, and if I had to pick a single horse out of the entire show last year, this would have been my pick. Just sporty, scopy, fast, great balance, looks simple, just great attitude. And Tiff uh, was saying she's not qualified for the Grand Prix yet, but uh, if she didn't qualify from today, she wasn't going to worry too much about it because she knows she's got a superstar in Battle Cry. And uh, he's just young. Stepping yeah. up to this level. So if he qualified, it would be a treat. If not, she wasn't too concerned with it. She uh, She's just as super proud of this horse as she should be and excited for his future. And he's jumping beautifully here. And hopefully she will because it would be lovely to see him jump tomorrow night. Look at that. Just so much push off the ground on takeoff. There's nothing not to love about this horse. Beautiful. Really sh jumps forward out of that double. Great sign of a horse with a lot of scope. Clears the last. A little bit patient and conservative with their time, but what a gorgeous round. Yeah, nicely done. 72.99 into the top dozen so far for Tiffany Foster. Wait and see what awaits for the weekend with the battle cry so far. But either way, they'll finish this season uh, having gone very nicely indeed, like you say. There's, there's going to be a smile on the face uh, come Sunday regardless. Yeah. And uh, now we'll uh, go from Tiffany Foster on to Eugenio Gaza and Shadori's PS for the El Milagro team. And uh, now there's uh, standing by Chaco Blue for the uh, Pan Am rider, part of their team last year, qualifying for the Paris Olympics as well. He's been a medalist previous to that in Lima as part of Team Mexico. Actually, is where the Pan Am Games are going to be going back to in 2027. I did not know that. There you go. It was announced the other day. Oh. Heading back. Now, okay. going along nicely so far. Yeah. Good rhythm. Say. Looking good. This horse also has a lot of blood from that Chaco Blue and the Ballo Bay du Rue lines. Very quick here. Eugenio doing such a great job to just sort of sit still, let the horse travel underneath him. Keeps the energy up through this turn. Comes up a little bit patient, but kind of keeps those revs up. So he's not too slow. Ugh. Oh, Ugh. Just a little bit on the angle as he yeah. jumped in at A. And then has B down as well. So that last double certainly causing a lot of heartbreak for people as they come down the last line. Leads them on a score of 864.98 for uh, Yohannia Gaza and Shilori's PS. And you can see him there. He was he was n trying so not to rush that. Yeah, exactly. I think he was thinking, I don't want to hurry through that last combination. We've seen a lot of the class have it down. But it was just a little bit on the angle as he jumped A, and then he, yeah. has, he had to kind of correct that to get to B. Has that down, too. Ben Mayer back with a second ride for the uh, world number two. This is uh, Jane Clark's Ginger Blue uh, by Plot Blue. It's been his uh, winner in Paris before now. It was a horse he rode into the Nations Cup a few weeks ago as well. A number of five-star successes on this horse. A beautiful jumper yeah. coming from that plot blue. Typical dark bay with a lot of white, just like plot blue himself. It was ridden by Marcus Enning, of course. Yes, beautiful jumper. And... Uh, he didn't breed so much, actually, Plot Blue, while he was in the sport because he was in the sport a long time with Marcus. But uh, that means the oldest babies are kind of just at this age now. And he just was uh, a beautiful to ride, classy animal, jumped in the perfect way. And that's what we see from the progeny, gorgeous jumpers. Very quick there. Steady's up to get this done. Chooses not to do the leave out in that line, but very quick. A 
again, this mayor, very, very careful. Funny, the plank not causing much trouble at all today. Sometimes we see the plank really, really hard for the horses to jump. In this particular case, the plank is aimed into the middle of the ring and not towards the side. And I wonder if when the plank is, especially those white planks, are aimed at the edge of the ring, if the horses have more trouble seeing it. Wow, look at that yeah. double kickback by the mare there. And then this unbelievable turn from Ben. Ooh, stayed there. It stayed up. He's looking pretty quick. Needs to steady Ooh. up. Whoa. Very careful. Helps her out there. Steadies up and looking very good. Can he beat him? Uh, 62 edge. 89 no. second spot Ben Mayer and Ginger Blue Jimmy Tirano really uh, did get off the fly with Cuchillo said we weren't sure how that would be sitting amongst the list but the they rest are really him. really trying to have to fight hard to get near him and they're not uh, 62 89 for uh, Ben Mayer to go into second Jimmy Tirano leads on 62 74 Daniel Coyle in third with Jasper yeah I mean they uh, that time of Jimmy's is holding up yeah, there he they he really put a pressure on that people have to come chase him, and it's not like Ben wasn't trying to chase. I mean, Ben was out there trying, so Jimmy clearly laid down. Mm. A hell of a ring. It was sort of deceptively fast, actually. Yeah, it, from was, Jimmy. it looked quick, but it was just hard to know how quick. You know, when you see before the rest of the class goes. Yeah. You know, he certainly looked like he was trying. Yeah, yeah, of course. But uh, but it didn't look flat out no. but he's he's done it so nicely that yeah, it didn't not look not that anyone in the first half out. wasn't going to catch him yeah but uh, clearly proving us wrong no very nicely done by Jimmy Toronto to keep the lead so far and Jad Dana now Lebanon and the Spring Hill Farm after eight uh, by Diorado this oh, we, this will be quick wow oh hard rub on the back pole there he does the double add don't think he meant to. He sort of pulled on the reins, and then the horse really stalled. Said, "Okay, okay, I'll I'm stop. listening. I'm listening. You told yeah. me to slow down, and then ends up having to do one more. So has a rub on the back, and then I was just saying how the plank hadn't come down so much, and of course, Murphy's law proving me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I think Murphy's law at the moment is is related to how many classes the Irish will win this week. <laughs> <I think laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. A little bit of leg to get out of that double. Jumped up high at A, landed a little shallow. But with the one down, yeah. looking like he's... Gives it a wave. Yeah. So retiring there for Chad Dana. And uh, after eight this time as well. So they call it a day. Jimmy Tirano remains in front. A little bit of breeze around now. As you can see, warm afternoon here for this uh, Bainbridge $62,500 class. And uh, Chad Dana retiring with uh, after eight. Now that is going to take us up to the drag break because I can see the fence is going up in the air. So it's the halfway point of this class. Uh, Jimmy Toronto leads, Ben Mayer second with Ginger Blue, third for Daniel Coyle at the moment with Jasper, fourth for Luis Francisco de Azevedo and Colin, and top five for Nal Nasser and Igor van der Vitemor for uh, that group at the moment. And we have the same remaining to see yet. So just around 35 left to go. So it could look completely different, yeah. um, but we'll see. Uh, come and join us for that second half coming up in just around uh, 10 minutes. A lead so far for our man who was first out of the starting gates, Jimmy Toronto, because she was at on 62.74.
It is not a machine, though the precision of its mechanics can draw some admiration. Propelled by a unique movement, graced with a singular drive, it has a personality of its own. It was born from a special bond. Crafted over years with infinite patience and utmost care, listening to every tick, going over every move again and again to build a trust like no other, the kind of trust that allows you to push further, higher, always. The kind of trust that can transcend any challenge. we've never been. Your dedicated Fidelity advisor can help you open those doors. They can help you create a retirement income plan designed to balance growth and guaranteed income and provide access to specialists who help with estate planning to look out for future generations. So you're not just growing and protecting your wealth, you're sharing it. Because doors were meant to be opened. My first goal when I decided to be a professional is to become like the best horsewoman I can be. Uh, it's really important for me to find the balance with my family, with the horses, that is my passion. Work with uh, the horses every day to do what I love. I used to have like one passion was the horses and now I have two, it's my daughter. So I really want to have this balance in my life. I'm Marie Eckard, I'm a professional show jumper representing friends, and I'm Lola's mom. Be mindful, be present, turn on your brain. Bainbridge is a fully integrated family of real estate companies who have developed and acquired more than 43,000 units representing $7.5 billion in transactions since inception. With over 650 associates nationally, Bainbridge engages in virtually every step of the real estate process, from development and construction, acquisition and disposition, to asset management and third-party property management of multifamily real estate Bainbridge is the 10th largest multifamily developer and the 14th largest multifamily builder in the United States. Our team of experienced and knowledgeable professionals is devoted to creating exceptional living experiences for all of our residents and building lasting, mutually beneficial relationships with our partners and clients. To learn more, visit www.bainbridgecompanies.com.
So, 34 left to go in our class this afternoon. Bainbridge, $62,500 class. And uh, with Jimmy Toronto leading so far on the score of 62.74. Uh, it's uh, Ben Mary in second, Daniel Cole in third with Jasper. Uh, taking us on now to the second uh, spin for several and a first spin for this man, the uh, world number nine, Richard Vogel. And uh, the German rider with Caroline Mawinney's Hollywood the fifth. Now, winner of last year's uh, Rolex Grand Prix as well. That was, of course, with Sapanu Balu Bay. Goes to defend that title uh, tomorrow, too. Looking forward to that. Hollywood has been a horse that's been ridden also by the owner, Caroline, who competes here, too. She's a, a teenage rider who's just been starting to get into the five stars as well. And she's been doing very successfully right the way through. But uh, certainly enjoyed uh, seeing this combination already up in the money this week. Richie off to the races to get this started. Does the eight. Steady's up here. And he is going. This has been a really fast horse for him. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nice shot there. Does the inside turn. Adds leg. Gets that done. Steady's up, nice for the two. Keeps moving, a little bit of reach across the back there. Nice tight turn back on this. Time to beat 62.74. I don't know if he's quite on it, but he's quick enough. Steady's up a lot to the last. Gets through the timers. Going to be a little bit beyond it yeah. and uh, goes into third place there. 63-2-6 for Richard Vogel of uh, Germany and uh, Hollywood the fifth. So he goes uh, top three. So already changing our top three. Still can't get to Jimmy Toronto. He's there at 62-74. Ben Mayer in second, 62-89. And uh, on now to Ireland, Simon McCarthy in the Rockridge Farms gotcha. It's mayor by Takato. Fast combination. Very. And I would think this is this is their big class. We'll see. Yeah. But I, I would expect them to have a run at this. Yeah, I think they're going to try. And uh, having ridden Gotcha myself, I know that she is <laughs> a speedy one. Another yeah. one that can really turn quick and uh, has a natural engine herself. So keeps going. Let's see what they can do. Good slice. And we're just taking a look. Jumps the double nice. Oh. Yeah, oh, plank comes down. Plank comes down. Does the six. Gets the inside turn. Still keep him running here because, again, looking for where, where four will put there them in the go. equation. There we go. I say just the plank down for them. At this stage. And good shot across this. Really tight turn back here, even inside the tracks. Real slice across that. Again, has the one down so far, but still trying to be quick. Big reach out. Gets over the last, but we'll have that one down. Quick time, though. Yeah, 62.73 as a time. So actually, he was had it. he was actually faster than Jimmy by a hundredth of a second. Uh, 62.74 leading time so far, but just on the four there for Simon McCarthy and uh, Gotcha, like I said, to sort of deceptively uh, fast. And they were giving it a good run. Erin Ballard of Canada, uh, Elan Fellas, the Esperanza Report hero now. The gelding by uh, Otton Jello. Let's see what Aaron can do. Aaron also is an incredibly fast rider. She's taking the right to left angle to number one. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Does the eight. Gets the seven. Beautiful shot there. The horse really careful about his front end. Jump up and away from it. She almost has a little bit of an angle here. She'll be able to steady up as she gets to the plank. 
and then gets there almost a little bit early, maybe anticipating that turn a little bit on the backside to go inside the main bridge, but has the front pole of the orange and yellow oxer. Just on the four at the moment for Erin. Uh, nice roll back here. A little bit more patient than some of the other really tight turns we've seen so far in the second half. But gets through the double at the end. Steadies up to the last. And clears it. Little touch there, the final uh, fence, 64.90 on the four faults there for Erin Ballard goes into 18th place for the Canadian as it stands. So top 20 for them. Jimmy Toronto, Ben Mayer, Richard Fogel, the uh, top three at the moment. Daniel Coyle in uh, fourth, those looking towards qualifying. Like we say, it's the top 10 already, uh, not already qualified. Takes down to Niall Nasser. Uh, Rodrigo Pessoa, a couple of those that are looking to get in that group to get in for tomorrow for the Rolex Grand Prix as well. Uh, Jimmy Toronto due back. In fact, do you think nope, we're going to go? That's he's, not I Jimmy. Think, I think Jimmy is uh, because he's <laughs> David Will first in the class at the moment. I think he's pretty confident he's going to qualify, so he yeah. did not jump on his other horse. David Will, Klaus Isaacs, uh, Zaccarado Blue. Uh, by VDL Zorocco Blue. For uh, David, five-star Grand Prix winner before now. World Cup winner out to the Middle East. One actually in Abu Dhabi earlier on this season as well. Now for David, actually business partner of Richard Fogel as well to take a spin at this. Zaccarado Blue, pretty swiftly through the first few. Looking good here. Ah, oh. no. You can see the horse just died a little bit on takeoff. Uh, David really tried to add leg and tried to get across it, and you could see the horse just lost all the power as he took off and just couldn't get across the back pole. Good turn back there, but unfortunately doesn't work out either. Just a little steady there, so cost them another rail for David. Now just looking to cruise home. I think just the one ride in this class. So got the likes of McLean Ward to come up, Laura Kraut, Carl Cook, Richard Fogel with another ride potentially, Niall Nasser um, with Ivory TCS. And has that one down as well. On the eight as they come home, 12 in fact as they come home. Uh, 12 at 67.45 for Germany's uh, David Will and Zaccarado Blue. So goes obviously a little bit further down into 30th to be exact. There we go, conclusion of David Will's round. And uh, so, on to our next now, Yves Dwee for uh, Keen O'Connor of uh, the horse owned by Nicky Walker, the Canadian rider. Now the uh, French red mare by Classic Bois Margot. Ten-year-old that's looked very impressive this year so far. And this horse has been really great. Keen ninth yesterday with uh, Fancy de Kegan. So Fancy jumped beautifully yesterday, and this is another top top mount of Kean's. We'll see what he's opting. Can't Fancy is still only nine, so yeah. very young. I don't. I think maybe he's thinking to use this one for tomorrow's class, but not a hundred percent sure. You see, looking like he's going for today's class. This horse so compact with the way that she jumps. There's a real elasticity to this horse if you look at her. Again, by Classic Bois Margot, which was a stallion that Simone de Lest rode. It's also an athletic one. Backs up nice through here. I think kian has been having really a tremendous season, tr just so consistent on all the horses. You know, he has a lot of horses in all of these classes, so he's in the ring constantly. His riding seems super sharp. He's looking fit and hopefully ready for what's coming this summer. 
Yeah, so uh, completing the score there, 64 at 6 0 is the time, and uh, clear there for uh, Keno Connor and uh, Eve Dweeb from that point of view. So they go clear uh, into sixth place for Kian, but uh, already qualified yesterday too, so picks up some nice prize money today potentially there. In his $62,500 class, to be exact, for this uh, Bainbridge sponsor class this afternoon. Thanks to Bainbridge, who've been a, a supporter right the way out through the season, and of course, of the five star Grand Prix back onto week nine as well. Mimi Gotchman now for the DG Sport Horses uh, in Clan BH, for the American bred gelding by Staccato Gold. Do we know that this horse was American bred? It says in there, but anyway. Yeah? We'll go with that. Anyway, off we go. In Clen BH. I think it might have been born in Australia. It one. might have been, actually. <laughs> <laughs> not sure, but... Off we go. Yeah, she's looking good again. I think thinking about the qualifying, wanting to be super quick here, and Mimi, we know, can be unbelievably fast. You got to leave the jumps up. Jumping beautifully. Makes this inside turn. Good slice there. The horse really jumps around that vertical. Great. You can see how much air time the hind end had. She's rolling into this double. Ooh. And you could see she just had a lot of speed as she jumped in there. She needed to maybe just sit up and slow the horse down a little bit. She kind of landed, was a little bit on the neck, leaned forward, and almost needed to actually do the opposite. That's why that front pole, that top pole just rolls out of the cups, just had a lot of speed. Otherwise, uh, quite a beautiful round. So she'll have just that four faults. 65.42 was her time. So from there, we go on now to uh, our next, and uh, that is going to be uh, McLean Ward. McLean with Robin Parsky's first lady. Flew around to win the uh, WEF Challenge Cup just the other day as well. Then he went on to win the Grand Prix on week 10. We will see. Yeah. And I think uh, McLean probably choosing a different horse for tomorrow night. So I would think he's going for it today on First Lady. Time to beat 62.74. Currently leading McLean's friend, Jimmy Terrell. <laughs> mm. Very quick here. Almost a little bit of a bend in that one stride, so he's already aiming towards the plank. A little bit of a shape here. This looks very intentional, so that he's aiming right to left, so he's inside of that turn. That was executed with precision. Big shot in and just was a tiny bit off it. Pops the back pole. A little bit of a touch there at that oxer as well. That one stays up. Neat back here. You can see him hold her straight. And then he keeps moving. Gives himself a good shot in. And then steadies up for the seven at the end. But unfortunately, having that one down. Quick time, though. Yeah, 62-54 finishing on the four there for McLean Ward. And uh, First Lady will go into 17th place for him. But he's already pre-qualified for the Grand Prix as well. But would like to have uh, just stolen away this very nice prize money class as well. Uh, just behind Henrik von Eckerman. So second yeah. fastest for the four, four falter. Uh, McLean's one spin at this class. And so Katie Dunn coming up next. Yeah, AWO going back to, yeah, Austrian. Austrian, not Australian. Aust Austrian. Austrian bread. All right. When I looked at it, I thought I Austrian. saw Australian bread. But good to know. There good we go. Know. We both stand corrected. We both stand. Well, we looked it up. You're we right. We See? looked it up. Like we said, we got to check those facts. <laughs> we want to be accurate you for you, everyone even, listening. Even if we don't get it right first time, we'll get it right sometime <laughs> we try, in the program. You know. yeah. <laughs> uh, let's go on to Katie Dynan with the Grant Ray Partners. Uh, Dijon Théodoron Z is the uh, gelding by de Mont de Semi for the President's Cup winner. In Washington last year. She had a super round yesterday on Out of the Blue. Is that the man's yep. name? Um, combination I'm really loving at the moment. But now she's on her trusty steed. Dijon. <laughs> a little mustard.
And she looks like she's going for it. Yeah. Trying to be quick. Jim Ryan for just the one time fault yesterday. Good Means business here. again today. Yeah, absolutely. And she can be really quick on this horse. We've seen her do well. Oh, ah. unfortunately, Plank coming down. Again, we haven't seen that too much, but uh, a couple of times it's caught a few people out. White Planks, they are delicate. And if you keep moving in that seven, those that are able to kind of really steady up are not having it. But if you stay a little bit wide and then you have to keep moving, it's coming down. Just coming home on the four, and again, just got to take a little care in this double. It's caused quite a few issues so far. Not for Katie, however. Nope. Looking good there. And gets over the last. Finish on the four, 70.194 there for Katie Dynan and uh, Dijon Tedorn Z. And so just leaves her further down the order on that one down for her. And uh, so leaves us with Jimmy Torano still in the lead. Ben Mayer second, uh, Richard Fogel in third. Fourth spot for Daniel Coe, Luis Francisco de Azevedo, top five. Tenth place at the moment, Kelly Cruciotti, Van der Veen, and Gideon. I say it's top ten, excluding those already qualified, that will take you through. And uh, a lady that doesn't have to worry about that either is uh, Laura Crouch, the St. Bride's Farms Confu, 17-year-old gelding now by Contact Me. It's been a Grand Prix winner here before now, including that Horseware Island uh, Grand Prix. Oh. oh, first one goes. You're a little bit of a bunk. On that. And Again, you're just trying to come into that left turn at that point. Yeah, I think you try to angle on the right to left and then uh, just has front pole on the way up. It is a little bit rampy, meaning that the front yeah. pole is slightly lower there, but when you have enough speed on that angle, she uh, just wasn't able, the horse wasn't able to get his front legs out of the way and does also have the back pole of the Lugano Diamond. Yeah, it decides Oxer. today is not the day. Yeah. You know, she's had Kung Fu many years, knows him well, and uh, he's 17, getting up there. Yeah, 17, he's getting up there. nothing to prove. Exactly. Yeah. He's getting up there in the, in the years. Has had some good rounds this season. Doesn't need to prove anything this afternoon, so uh, you're done. Go back for carrots. It'll be another day. Exactly. Don't worry. Kendra Clarice, bring up now for the Steph X tables. Do it easy. The ge gelding by Vigo, de Suis Vigo CC for the German rider. A good start here with this horse actually was um, eighth in the Grand Prix last week as well. Top ten there. Fourth in the MS Grand Prix uh, back into Paris a few weeks ago as well. So has been coming off the back of that on a good form run too for the 29-year-old. And this horse appropriately named with do it easy because they tend to make it look easy. Yeah. Already had a win in the one, 150 Classic. Looking good here. And she's looking neat here on this turn. Gets a nice little bit of a bend there at the end. So she's inside. Oh, good shot here. A little bit of a touch at the vertical. Luckily, it just kind of rolls in the cups, but stays up. Steadies up, keeps the energy active through that double. Help the balance. Nice across this. Keeps it going. Seven. Clears the last. Very Good time, but yeah, not very nice. Very ahead. nicely done. 64 47 to sixth place there for Kendra Clarice here. Brinkop, do it easy. Didn't look hurried. No, they did it easy. They did it easy. <laughs> I know you like that one. Nice and easy. <laughs> but, but they did. They just they smoothly did. It went. It smooth and uh, it very simple. Didn't look out of their pace. Didn't look as though they were running. Just had to just get into a nice groove all the way around and off we go and uh, another rider is capable of doing that is Paul O'Shea now of uh, Ireland Paul with a uh, little magic for the uh, Trelawney farm gelding by Backgammon 
Second spin for Paul here. So we're going to come into the second rides of uh, several into this class. We've got uh, Richard Fogel coming up with a second shot. Jad Dana, Nan Nassar potentially, uh, Halle Grimes, and yeah, a good few others in there. Tiffany Foster, etc. Yeah. Spy. Nice and simple. Love it. Uh, for Team Eye Candy. Now let's see what Paul O'Shea can do. Still leading, Jimmy Toronto, 62-74. He was first to go. He's held them off yeah, for over 40 riders now. Very impressive feat that he's maintained. We'll see if there's a couple of really fast ones coming up. So we'll see if that holds all the way through. That would be a miraculous feat. We don't see that very often. But at the moment, we're seeing if Paul and Spy can do it. Good, gets the inside. And he did that well because he was already turning back. He wasn't kind of angling left to right. He was angling almost right to left, so he's already turning back. Jumps up high, but unfortunately gets in through into that double really far and then just a little bit close to B. And then he looks like he's just a little bit more patient now that he's had the one down. Nice to the last, a little bit close, but gets over it. Just on 469.74 for there for Paul O'Shea and Spy this time. Paul currently in 12th place with Emerald from a little earlier on on the clear there. That was 66.71. Niels Brunsiels now, Orgy van der Vosberg for the uh, Belgian rider, making his uh, appearance, I think maybe first appearance here in Wellington, Florida as well. And uh, now for the rider who's won a lot of big Grand Prix, including at the Dutch Masters, going back to uh, 2018. Of course, that part of the Rolex Grand Slam now. And Niels yesterday was further down the order. He had a couple down, so he needs to get himself into the qualifying positions now. Yeah, I think he's thinking about it. Does 10 there, very patient. So not racing here. Maybe just wanting to get the clear. Yeah, just coming nicely so far. As you say, You've got that balance between being patient and then almost not wanting to feel like you're just defending. Yeah, exactly. There needs to be a little bit of the, I want to say, dare I say, offensive ride a little yeah. bit today. You need to kind of be really on it. But Neil's looking like he's just trying to be cautious to leave all of the jumps up and be efficient and tight with his turns, but not thinking too much about really running Origi off his feet. Jumps through the last double well. Steadies up. Nice. He will get the clear, but definitely patient on that time. 72-64 and uh, achieves whatever he, he was aiming to there because uh, it is very obvious he was going for a steady one. Niels Brunsiels of Belgium, Luigi van der Rosberg, and uh, hopefully them will uh, then put them in enough of a slot to be uh, into tomorrow. Goes into 16th place at the moment, but there are quite a few amongst that top. 10 that have already qualified so it may well shift that far down yeah exactly you never know it was a strategic move yeah for him. obviously look to the list obviously look where they were and went okay we, we, what we, do we need got to this do? worked out yeah Dara Kenny now serendipity for the beer bam staples actually mayor by Stolzenberg is a nine-year-old for uh, Dara Dara winner of the opening five star of the season back onto week five there for the Fidelity Grand Prix that's a beautiful round on Amsterdam yeah also helped the Irish team to the Nations Cup win last week on Amsterdam as well. But I think this week he's aiming for a different horse. Yes. Ah. Oh, unfortunately, having back pull. We've seen that come down a couple of times today. Maybe they just not catching it right to the base enough. 
and the horses just holding themselves. I mean, all season long, that Lugano Diamonds pale blue poles have been a troublesome spot. No matter where that double's been, we've seen it come down a ton all season long. Ooh, hard rub there at the back pole, the Liverpool Oxer at number nine, but that one luckily staying in the Cubs. Front pole going of the black and gold double at the end. Steady's up to the last. We'll have to settle with the two down. Finish on a score of eight this time, 69-34 for Darren Kenny. And uh, Serendipity takes us up to what was officially 49th on order of 70. Couple of scratches in there uh, as we've gone along the way. Carl Cook next, Caracol de la Roque. And uh, now for the uh, Californian to take a run. Just, just four faults yesterday was enough to put him into qualifying for the winner of the American Gold Cup last year and so the uh, million dollar Coachella Cup in Thermal. Now he's sitting on his mount from the Pan Am Games. And this horse can be lightning fast. And uh, I think he's aiming Kalinka for tomorrow night's class. So I believe Carl's going to give this a go here. And if he can leave the jumps up, he's bound to be a quick one. Let's see what he can do. Easy in the eight. Easy in the seven. Again, got to leave the jumps up, but this horse is so fast, wasting no time in the air. Ooh, really on just the right yeah. corner there. Needs, yeah, it needs to get a little bit more to the middle there. They did. Yeah. Actually helped put a little bit of a bend. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, look at that. Look at that mare being so careful. They were on the right corner before the left corner there. But it is the correct corners for speed. Clears that. Tight back. Steady's up here. Look at this amazing expression on this horse's face. Looks like it loves to jump. Clears that. Steadies up. Space to the last. Clear and looking 61 like our new leader. Yeah, there we go. 61-5-0. Uh, deposed after a long time. Jimmy Serrano into uh, second spot now. Carl Cook leads. Caracol de la Roque, 61-50. Uh, some, some really quick stuff in there. Some, some that was planned, some that <laughs> yeah. came with it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I don't know if he meant to be so much on the right side of the fifth jump at the plank, and then I don't know if he meant to be so hard left on number seven. Great effort from the horse's part. We're, we're going to go yes, because it worked. Yes, cause it, yes works. it was intentional. It, it was definitely it intentional, worked. Yeah. and it worked. But great I mean, as we say, really crafted leader. a good round out of it. Absolutely. Richard Fogel now of Germany, and uh, Dream Star won the French Brick Gelding by uh, Cannon. Looks like he's winding up to take a run at this as well. fastest riders in the world. We didn't see a change at the top for 50 riders. Yeah. But let's see if we get another change quickly. I don't know. Carl was pretty quick. However, Henrik's time was still faster. Yes. On Glamour Girl at 60.85. So we know it can be beat in time, but can they do it with leave the jumps up? Very quick there. Oh, no. And he was trying. You could tell yeah. he was putting the leg on, trying to get there, and was just too far away. And the horse did a good job to kind of not get too tangled in it, and then he gets through that double a little bit early. So Richie slowing up now with the two down. Obviously pre-qualified as our winner from last year. But I think he was trying to win this class yeah. today. Having those two down, but gets over that last one. 
Yeah, finishing on eight at 68.49. And say the next thing for him is to defend his title in the uh, Rolex Grand Prix tomorrow. He finished top 20 yesterday regardless as well with Sapano Balabay. He'll be back with that horse tomorrow night. Good luck to them. We'll see how they get on. And uh, Caitlin Campbell now. Caitlin uh, with the ride of uh, Vantas C, the uh, gelding by uh, Alba R. Actually very, went very well in Ocala last week as well and has had a good run over in California at Thermal. And the completion of the shows there is headed over here to Wellington, Florida. She's had a, a really good season. She was really great in Ocala last week. Very strong performances across the board. I think she just had one down in the big Grand Prix, which was very tricky. So that was a super performance. And she's looking good here so far. Yeah, six in that uh, Grand Prix qualifier there as well. So she was right up there. Yeah, she had a super week. Yeah. Little touch on the back of the Logano. Okay, moving here. You can see her horse number flapping on her <laughs> saddle pad. Hopefully not creating too much wind resistance, but <laughs> no, not not too much not too much friction. Shouldn't slow her down too much. Somebody used to joke that my feathers would slow me down and create well, wind I mean, do we need to put you in an F1 wind tunnel and find <laughs> out? I think we, I we're past that stage of your career. So yeah, exactly. No more speeding around. We, we could have done... We, we, there are ways to calculate it. I bet there are. They there are. The there cyclists. are. They yeah. Cyclists cyclist as well, yeah. yeah. Big stretch out there. Looking good. Steady's up. She's not going to be on the pace of the leaders, but very solid on the clear round. Yep, going to go into 17th place, 69-65. Clear there for Caitlin Campbell and uh, Avantus C. So just very neatly done, like I say. Went very nicely uh, just last week as well. Jadana back now with the Itchy Group's Itchcock Didam. Gelding by Marius Claudius, which actually was written by Robert Smith, if I remember right. Robert was actually here a couple of weeks ago training. Harvey Smith. Harvey Smith. No, it'd be Robert. Yeah, yeah sure? it was Robert. Yeah. Yeah. Harvey would have retired by then. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I trust you. Yeah, no, I this, I this one you. I know I'm right on. All oh, right, that one I yeah. trust. I seem to, I think he took Marius Claudius hunting at one point. I seem to remember. Really? It was made That's cool. Right in the, they were winning World Cups and things and took him out across the country and all the rest of it and just keep him, keep him sweet. Anyway, Jad Dana, Ishkok the Dam, off across the country now uh, here for our next. Looking like Jad is trying to be competitive. Time from Carl is 61.50. Ooh, far away there. Gets away with it. But lands, keeps the pedal to the metal. Very quick through there. Clears the flank. Gets that inside turn. And then just ends up having to add one more stride in. Perhaps he was wanting the one less, just didn't come up. Then he had to add it in late, so he has that vertical down. He was trying to get it done, but just didn't happen. And then cuts down a little bit across the back pole there at the Liverpool, having the back one down at number nine. And then you can see Jad just slowing up a little bit. Stretches across the double. And we'll have to settle with the two down. So a little bit further down for them from that point of view. And uh, so uh, still progressing through our list. Where are we up to now? We are down to uh, 54. 54. 54 of 70. And uh, now NASA once again now, this time with the Evergate Stables Ivory TCS. And uh, this horse has got plenty of speed. Absolutely. Already a speed winner from a meter 50 speed class. This class basically a couple weeks ago. And uh, we know it was speedy with Daniel Coyle, his yeah. former rider, and it has been super speedy with Niall as well. Yeah, Daniel won the uh, Nations Cup Grand Prix on this horse yep, I remember. previously as well. But Niall. Now, Niall already had a good round with Igor. So it's in ninth place there. 
Uh, we'd say he's got his got his qualifying sorted now for yeah, tomorrow. Exactly. Jumps up high here. This horse very, very quick across the ground. Ooh. And there just looking like was a bit far off it. And has the back pole coming into the Lugano. And then Niall just taking his time here. Again, I mean, you're trying to go fast, and you got to pick the first distance a lot of times, and sometimes that first distance out of the corner is just not the one that you really want and looking like maybe. After having that down, he's already got his qualifying spot sorted. Like you said, yeah. he's maybe calling it a day. So decided to retire there for Ananasa and Ivory TCS. Natalie Dean next with the uh, Marigold Sport Horses uh, combination Oasis Fender Book's Tail for the uh, California rider. Now again, for her, this this is a chance to take a run total if, uh, on this ten-year-old. This was, I believe, a former ride of Paracelans. You said that with confidence. I did. <laughs> I did. I, I don't know if I said that with so much confidence. Let's see. Yes, it had another name. A yeah. Buttercup. Okay, uh, that's an interesting change around then. I know, it was named Buttercup and it was ridden by Martin Fuchs and Paris Sellen, like I yeah. thought. But I saw it jump a little bit in uh, Sunshine Tour a couple years back and I really liked it. And then uh, Natalie has taken over the ride now. A little bit of a twist there over the plank, but careful horse to get it done. Gets the inside. And Natalie is trying. Testy 1.50 set recently by Carl Cook. Carl Cook. Keeps on the movement here. Steadies up a little bit to the skinny. Natalie doing a good job to create the energy. A little bit of an angle there, but beautiful horse really opens up behind. She steadies up to the last. Quick, but not quick enough. Not quite. 64-27 there for Natalie Dean and Oasis uh, van der Buxtale. And uh, so puts them into fifth place so far. Top five for Natalie. And uh, so, good result. Carl Cook still leads on 61-5-0. Jimmy Toronto second, 62-74. Ben Mayer in third, 62-89. Uh, Richard Fogel after that. Then Nat Dean for a top five. And so now come LZ for Vanessa Mannix. Mayor uh, by uh, Kindy Low 3. Really lovely looking horse. I like this one. Me too. This is an unbelievable jumper. I saw a jump a little bit last week. And it was incredibly impressive. One of the more athletic, talented, natural jumping horses I'd seen in a long time. It's really a beautiful jumper. It has a super strong hind leg. If you look at the gallop, look at that inside left hind leg. It really grabs the ground, and then look at how it opens up behind. Absolutely beautiful jumper. Stretches its nose out as it takes off, and then midair really using its neck and withers to jump the jumps. And it is just a beauty. Yeah, it's got very well in thermal top three in some of the, the big classes. I was actually ridden with uh, Jenny Rankin and Catherine Passmore at one point too as well. A little further back. Yeah, does the inside turn, gets a little bit parked at it, but then kind of puts the power back in, steadies up into this double. Beautiful jumper. You can see how she really sets herself to jump these jumps. Neat back. Ooh. And unfortunately, it just looked like the horse stuttered a little bit on takeoff. It's a very careful mare. I think she was studying the skinny a little bit and just maybe a tiny bit off it. Or maybe was looking for a little bit extra support, but unfortunately... Has that down? Yeah, it just leaves them on 469, 43, 4 for Vanessa Mannix and uh, Carmela Z this time. 56th on our starting sheet of 70 in total that could have gone. And uh, so to Hallie Grimes now, Caroline of Bullmore. 
the uh, rider from Texas with the Can We Keep It LLC's mare by Diorado. Caroline now 14 years of age. And speaking of Caroline, and we're talking about winners of tomorrow night's class, this yes. is a horse that is a former winner of the Rolex Grand Prix. Except it was out on the field then. Exactly. <laughs> and a different bombs. rider and yeah. a different location. Yeah. But it was still week 12. Still week 12, still the Rolex Grand Prix. Right. I want to say it might have been week 11 that year. <laughs> it might have been. There was a year that we had to change because of the World Cup finals, but I'm not sure yeah, that not was sure it. I'm not sure if it was that year. But whatever it was, it was the finale Rolex Grand Prix. And yeah. This was the winner of it. And look at that gorgeous jump. This horse, always super talented. Came from Margie Goldstein Angle. Look at that special jump. Big jump there. Hallie adds a little bit of leg just to get out of that double. This horse was always a little bit special with her mouth. You could see she gets sometimes a little fussy, but the jump is just spectacular. Steady's up here, really pats the ground. I actually think the fluidity of the jump with Hallie is uh, is really exceptional. She gets a great jump out of the horse. Yeah. And as this horse has developed, it's 14 now in its younger years. It, uh, it looked complicated, and with Hallie, I think it looks much simpler and really super jumper yeah really nice turn then uh 60 uh it's just 65 there we've got as a time but actually it's going to be a little bit more than that 68 71 68 71 family grimes and carolina Bullmore goes into 17th place and while we're at the facts it was uh the year before actually we ran week 11 because of the world cup finals daniel doiser won that year on the field but yes i do remember uh, Ashley Bond winning. And again, the, the last two winners of the Rolex Grand Prix, it's been their first five-star Grand Prix. Yeah, unbelievable. So, you know, it could come from anywhere this week. Who knows? But it's it's very strong all the way. It's the strongest field we've had in a long time here. So yeah. I, I don't particularly expect any any wild cards out of it, I think, based on the on the level of the field. You think so, but you know what? We, like we were saying <laughs> earlier, the Rolex Grand Prix sometimes just, just keeps everybody on their toes. Just just has some, some interesting throws up in it. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Bournes now of Ireland, the Belwyn Farm and TL Sport Horses, uh, Copy Chab, the gelding by uh, Copy Right. Ten roll for Andrew. Andrew also went in after a good round yesterday with C Top Blue. Yeah, he's qualified already. He had a super round yesterday. Finished third in the Challenge Cup. So I think he's going for it today on Copy Champ. Carl's time to beat 61.50. Gets a little bit to the base of that. Has to really add leg. Yeah, horse landed shallow. Good did a good job to get across the back pole of the Oxer but then landed real shallow in the double and uh, tried to add leg. And then now just having a few down in a row. He goes around. He'll just try to organize again. Again, copy champ just 10 getting up to this level this year. A little bit of a touch at B. That one stays up, however. And patient enough around this turn, not worrying too much about being quick. And a little touch at the last as well. Yeah, so it's going to be a total of 12 there for Andrew Bournes and Copy Champ, 76.06. And so a total of uh, 12 for Andrew. Still Carl Cook in the lead. Jimmy Toronto second. Ben May a third in our class this afternoon so far. <laughs> Tiffany Foster back. The Canadian this time with the five roosters electric. She the 10-year-old mayor by Emerald. She was saying what? She was saying before the class that uh, she was going to try to give it a go on electric today. Oh, uh, why not? <laughs> so let's see what she does. <laughs> why not? Exactly. Why not? Are she already had a beautiful round on her other horse. 
battle cry. Let's yeah. see what she can do on Electra. We're, we're not just here for the g giggles. Give it a go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're here for five-star competition. We want to see speedy sport. And I think Tiff's going to give it to us. Carl already did. So did Jimmy Toronto. Good shot at one. She does the nine. Doesn't quite get there in the eight. She's looking... Good here again. Carl did eight and seven. Oh, that fence was still down. This fence was still down. Lucky tiff there. And again, that is not ever going to be on the rider's no. fault, unfortunately. That does come down. That was completely unrelated. Yeah. But unfortunately, if the uh, if it's an error and the jump doesn't get put back, it's not the rider's fault. So if they have to jump it low, they jump it low. They jump it low. Or you can decide that you're not jumping it. Raise your hand and go. That's true. Hang on a minute. Although I don't know any rider <laughs> that would opt to do that. <laughs> take it. <It's laughs> you're going to take the freebie when you can get it. It's a foot and a half lower. Take it. <laughs> exactly. And you know what? I don't know the rule. If you knock it over well, it's already down. It would still count. Does it still it count? It still count because you committed to it. So, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, unfortunately, she does have a uh, B coming out of the last double as yeah, well. Yeah, she has a couple down there. Eight faults, 64-2-4. Uh, eight there for Canada's Tiffany Foster and uh, Electric this time. I think we're into our, our final ten here. Luis Fernando Larraza, Bala Venezuela, Victoria Tomates, Condara, the horsey road at uh, the Pan Am Games last year. Now, a little bit further down, 18th with Baroness a little bit earlier on. Nice clear there. Not sure whether that's enough. I don't know. I was just thinking, actually, I was trying to look at the list and see if uh, yeah. if I thought it was going to, how far down it would go, but I'm not and sure. I, I, I'm also not getting drawn in the fact of saying someone's in or out. Right, I'm we not, don't know. We do I'm, not know. I am not, <laughs> I'm not having someone commit me to that one at no, all. Absolutely. I'm, We will know at the end of the day. Yes, we will. Good start with Kondara, though. It's a lovely partnership with Vo Victoria Hotomato, who rode this horse herself as well. She's competed right the way through to Pan Am Games, too. Down in, uh, actually, from Panama. Looking good so far. Steady's up nicely there in the two. Really backed up well. And he was trying to be efficient. Carl was very, very quick. Don't think he's quite on the pace of Carl. But he's looking solid so far. Steady's up here to the last. Clears it. Yeah, so uh, time not too far away, 65-53. Puts himself into 12th place there pretty with uh, Condara, so that's pretty good as well. So a uh, quick look down. That that should be enough for them. Should be because yeah. Carl is in, Ben is in, Richie is He's in. in. Yeah, so that Natalie's in. Yeah, yeah no, Natalie's that should be, should be enough. Key barring, a in. barring a major shake-up of the last few. And Ben's actually ahead of him on two already. Yeah. Again, we can't say for sure, but we're just going <laughs> off of what we can see yeah, right we're, now. Yeah, we're... we're we're contemplating and all the other words that go with it. <laughs> <laughs> we're playing with it and looking. We're, we're, we're trying to make this, you know, get a little extra frisson to it. Who's yeah. in, who's out? Grant Sager is in the ring now with uh, Frida. And so the mayor by Baludorheit didn't quite have their day yesterday. So another back for a good spin. The rider from uh, Base and Aiken these days in South Carolina. Some nice rounds on the uh, Major League Tour last year, too, especially in the early runs in Vancouver. And he's chasing. He is. He is going for it. Steadies up, nope. unfortunately, just gets a little bit too close there. And then maybe with the one down, deciding to just go around, try to have a nice solid round. 
We've seen 22 clear. And I think he's tipping his hat. And yeah. we'll call it a day. Yeah, not going to work out this time, unfortunately, for uh, the combination there, Grant Sega and Frida. So nine left with uh, Germany's Kendra Clarissia Brinkop now. Steph X and Scuderia 1918's Nektar van der Bissop, styling by Echo van Spieveld, this time for the uh, German team rider. Kendra already in eighth place with Do It Easy. So Kendra looking good. Let's see, she makes a little circle as last one is just in her line. Nice enough, the ground jury gave her a little pause on her start clock, and now they're back at it. Beautiful jump there. Yeah. Nice start. This horse jumps in a really beautiful shape. Oh, no. Oh, that did not work out as it's intended. There was there was some eyeing up of that then. Yeah, I think uh, just, just kind of staring at it. Staring and had it, got hesitant and went, yeah. oh, okay. No, 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 are we going here? Are we yeah. not going here? What are we doing? Okay, we couldn't quite see. It would be interesting to see from the other angle, but we won't. But, yeah. you know, it's what they can see and what we can see are two different things. Yeah, there we exactly. go. That's another one down, unfortunately. Somehow that eases the blow. Yes. <laughs> when you have another one down, you're like, well, I had another one down anyway. So the other one doesn't matter. Jumps good here. And just a little bit insecure yeah. about the front end there at the last. So leaves them on a score of 12 at 71.59 for Kendra Clarissia Brinkop and uh, Nectar van der Bissiop. Uh, so puts them out of the equation there, but she's already sitting in eighth place with Do It Easy, so is in the money already for the German rider. Elise Oka now of the US, the High Hopes Farms, uh, Bonhomme Richard. French bred stallion by Katoki. Now, uh, Katokis are usually, uh, this is where they come into their own as well. Yeah, absolutely. They uh, age 13, and Katoki's. Always really nice characters. Kind of metronome canner usually. Yeah. And again, she's bringing this horse up alongside her uh, Nations Cup ride. They finished top five in the Grand Prix in uh, Ocala back in December as well. Again, this season just been getting a, a few nice rounds behind them, including in the in the 150 classes. Yeah. Just to tick along, and we're, we're back in that same stage here. I think she's thinking Elvira for tomorrow. If, but yeah. I don't know if she's, is she qualified? I'm not sure. I actually want to say maybe not. So, using Bonhomme. No, she was 27th. Oh, so she's... Yeah, that silence was me going through paperwork, yeah. that yeah. we don't have paperwork anymore, so you don't hear me rustling anything. It's <laughs> <laughs> Computer <laughs> I'm looking at I'm looking at a screen to... 27th. Okay, so she's in, trying to go quick today. Gets right to the base of that. Horse does a good job to back up and get around it. She really steadies up here, but then gets a great shot. Makes the inside turn, is a little bit past the track. Keeps moving here. Takes a big one in. We'll have to slow up. Does the horse really backs up, pats the ground through the double? This horse does a great job of kind of on takeoff. You can really see it. It's very noticeable about how it really grabs the ground and then jumps. Clears that. Just looking good. A little bit off the pace from our leaders, but beautiful round. Yeah, nicely done, and it's going to be clear there for Elise Oaken, and uh, we'll uh, give them a final time, 67.79, to go into 17th position with uh, Bonhomme Richard.
Eric Ballard's second ride now for Alain Ferdinand this time. It's uh, Fave Dui, French bread mare by uh, Windows van der Kostevel. Second one of those here. Now, Erin, again, well stacked with horsepower. Absolutely. This is a young one, only nine, yeah. but uh, it's a good one. I remember what we learned, what I learned yesterday. Window, okay. Windows is cornet. Yeah. Did you did you check it or do you believe me? No, I believe you and I did check. Yeah, there you go. You see? <laughs> I just don't. I don't know. You should check it. I but I did believe you. Yeah. I wasn't doubting. I was more out of curiosity. Yeah. Stretches there yeah. on the seven, gets that done. Nice and smooth so far. Steady's up, flipping his head a little bit yeah. just while she's going to steady. She's just trying to make that adjustment, kind of disagreeing with her, but he listened. And this one has really a big stride. She takes the big one here, and then he backs up beautifully there. Sometimes when you take a big one like that into the double, they don't back up so well, but he really landed and paused held himself so that the momentum didn't carry too much. She's looking very solid. Time is 61.50 to beat. I don't think she's uh, going to no. catch it, and unfortunately... She we'll caught have something. It, it was the pole. She caught something else, yeah. exactly. A coming down. So 67.15, and uh, it is uh, on four there, Ferry and Ballard, and uh, Fave Dwee in the end uh, for the Canadians. So uh, out of the running, I'm afraid, for our leading score, which is 61.50 from Carl Cook. Jimmy Toronto is still in second. Harry, another one I spoke to during the course walk, and he said he was going to give it a go. Harry Charles, Casco Blue. Time to beat 61.50, set by Carl Cook and Caracol de la Roque. Let's see what Harry and Casco Blue can do. He's planning on using Aralyn tomorrow night in the Grand Prix, is what he said. So he was going to give it a go here with Casco. Gets the eight. Gets the seven. Good shot here. Really steadies up here. Beautifully done. He steadied and kept the energy up. Good move across. Yeah. He's moving. Carl took some big risks and slices and got very lucky. So in order to catch him, Harry's going to have to do something. Extraordinary. Ooh, hard rub there. Keeps going here for the skinny. Goes out, gets a good shot. Yeah. Oh, and it's gone. 61.50 is Carl's time. How does it compare? Uh, it's going to be a little bit of drift of that. It's just on the four. There's 62.95. And uh, well, would have gone fourth place if he'd left the fence so up. So it was a good effort. Yeah. But... No cigar. Yep, yeah, goes good way down then with four faults, unfortunately. Uh, Jordan Coyle now, first of four left to go. This is the Celtic Park's Emerald uh, Irish Cruise for the mayor by uh, Ringfort Cruise. So just four left. This horse was going really fast the other day. Let's see what. she can do now. And Jordan going for it. Just nine years of age. Very quick. And Jordan is on it. Good shot there. Lance puts the 
gas on. Keeps going. Then steadies up a little bit here to the double. That helps with the double. Ooh, Oof. That looked far away. Yes. She landed real shallow there. But he's got to keep moving. Time to beat 61.50. Ooh. Gets close to the skinny, but he's on a good angle. Ooh, drifts out a little bit here. Clear and no. nah, unfortunately. Can't get out of the double. Look at that. He lands and puts his head down and says, Ugh, we gave it a go. Yeah, so by that point it was all out the window. Oh uh, well out the door, straight <laughs> by. <laughs> Sixty five forty seven finishing on eight there for Jordan Coyle and Sir Emerald Irish cruise off down the river fast no, as no, possible. Yeah, exactly. No closing circle, just nope. Directly through the timers and out the gate. Yeah, no ceremony there. Get through it a lot faster in the day if we went oh, like that all the time. Uh, USA's Kristen van der Veen now. The bull run jumpers, uh, bull runs has said. The uh, gelding by Christian 25 is the 10 year old uh, for Kristen. I, I, we'll see what happens. I'm not sure how, how much they'll push this one. I think they, they've done enough now that they'll take a run at this. We will see. This is also with some good results up in Ocala too in uh, recent months. Nice World Cup finalist. And she's off. And she's going. Whoop. Oh. Gets right to the base, but clears it. Oh, and that was not to the base. That was not to the base. There she was very far off. She was just right in between the seven and the eight. Horse, very brave to leave the ground and then just kind of keep on going here. Again, it's a green horse, and she's trying to be competitive. Uh, just kind of misjudged where they were at. Pops up over that, but looking like she's eased up off the gas at this point. Yeah, just easing off. Still with Carl Cook in the lead. Jimmy Toronto second, Ben Mayer in third. Jumps good there. Yeah, there we go. Finishing on 475.49. Four there for uh, Kristen van der Veen and uh, Bull Runs has said uh, for them. So two left to come, One, both for the USA, in fact, with Kathleen Driscoll and uh, Bliss Hears as it stands. And uh, Kathleen Driscoll with Don Stewart's flotilla. Now, they've been winners of this same class onto the earlier five-star weeks as well. So yep. we know we've got it, got it in them, obviously a different course. I was um, going to say, though, I think Carl should be a little nervous about this one yeah. because uh, they have it in them to win. Like we said the other day, they have a lot of international speed wins under their belt. She won a class, a five-star class, this class basically a couple weeks back, so we know they can do it. Let's see what she attempts. Is off to the races, gets the eight, gets the seven. Again, this one is so fast, wasting no time, but they got to leave the jumps up. Very close there. Yeah. A little early in the course. It's to be about that to say close. this might be a danger. Yeah. Just made a little shift yeah. there. No, so Carl Cook is safe for now. For now, one more after. Yeah, except the one coming up is a nine year old. Yeah, I'm not so sure that... I'm looking like Kathleen also, calling it yeah. a day. Kathleen Driscoll uh, is uh, going to say thank you very much. Things didn't quite work out there. Gave it a good try. Kathleen Driscoll and Flotilla. Gave it a good go. Yeah. But uh, sometimes when you start that strong out the gate, it's uh, you got to keep it together. And unfortunately, just had a lot of speed. Bliss here is then, I uh, mentioned, with the Bridgeside Farms uh, nine-year-old stallion, Frigno de Mick. 
by Carinio. Uh, really nice looking course. I don't expect him to go trying to chase Carl Cook here because this is just starting to get into their so. groove at this point. Unlikely. I don't I don't want to ruin the tension, but no. I'm going to be realistic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't and it's not because I don't think they're competitive. I think it's a lovely, lovely horse. Yeah. No, I think more, like you said, just kind of developing it nine years old. Stallion. Bigger things in the future. Yeah, I think thinking, this is a good thinking experience towards, round for them. Thinking towards development, not so much trying to take the lion's share of today's prize money, but you never know. Yeah. Nice to, see know. nice to see Bliss with a couple of really nice horses, though. goes and we'll just give you a little play-by-play -play while we can see it she gets up there in the seven she's a little bit wide here back to the double she gets a good shot but unfortunately yeah. has the front pole down so that does mean that Carl Cook and Caracol will be our winners today Clears the plank all right, and uh, yeah, nice shot at the uh, Oxer after that, yeah. the uh, orange and yellow. She chooses to go around the Bainbridge, yeah. the last fence, so she's just taking her time now again. Just thinking about development of the nine-year-old stallion. Yes. Certainly one for the future. Looks scopy as can be. Really nicely through the adequate double without too much trouble. Again, she's she's managing to keep some pace on this i mean she's not not holding back she's she's taking it yeah exactly I think seriously she's enough but just giving space yeah exactly trying to be quick enough about it you know the horses have to ease in to learn the speed she's coming now to the black and gold double gets over a big jump at b heading towards the last steadies up a little bit softens and clears the last one yeah there we go um, so it's going to be a win for Carl Cook and uh, Caracol de la Roque and uh, second spot for Jimmy Torano and Cachillo Z. Third place to Ben Mayer and Ginger Blue. Top four for uh, Richard Fogel of Germany and Hollywood the fifth. Uh, fifth place to Natalie Dean, Oasis van der uh, Sixth place to Daniel Coyle and Jasper. I'll go a bit further down for those looking ahead to qualifiers as well. Seventh place to Colin and Luis Francisco de Azevedo. Eighth to Kendra Clarice of Rinkop and Do It Easy. Ninth to Keen O'Connor, Eve Dewey. Tenth to Tanar Nasser and uh, Igor, 11th Ben Mayer, 12th Luis Fernando Rathabal and Condara. So a few of those in there that will gain some qualifying spots for the Rolex Grand Prix as well tomorrow. Looking forward to that, but it's going to be the US flag flying. Uh, Carl Cook and Caracol de la Rock, the Californian, claims the class. It's not an Irish win. It's, no, it <laughs> it's a not. US win on the cards, uh, which, well, you know, the fight back from the home team. Well done, Carl Cook. And uh, they win this Bainbridge uh, class here this afternoon thanks to Bainbridge and to Richard Schechter and his team uh, who continually support here throughout the Winter Equestrian Festival and uh, we will be back uh, tomorrow and a uh, reminder of what happens tomorrow 6.30 uh, I'll be on air with the pre-show for the Grand Prix as well and 7.45 with the first on course in the Rolex Grand Prix but from 6.30 we'll bring you a whole list of coverage in the run-up we'll see you then for the finale Grand Prix of the season Rolex Grand Prix tomorrow night here in Wellington It is not a machine, though the precision of its mechanics can draw some admiration. Propelled by a unique movement, graced with a singular drive, it has a personality of its own. It was born from a special bond. Crafted over years with infinite patience and utmost care, Listening to every tick, going over every move again and again.
to build a trust like no other. The kind of trust that allows you to push further, higher. Always. The kind of trust that can transcend any challenge. Bainbridge is a fully integrated family of real estate companies who have developed and acquired more than 43,000 units representing $7.5 billion in transactions since inception. With over 650 associates nationally, Bainbridge engages in virtually every step of the real estate process, from development and construction, acquisition and disposition, to asset management and third-party property management of multifamily real estate Bainbridge is the 10th largest multifamily developer and the 14th largest multifamily builder in the United States. Our team of experienced and knowledgeable professionals is devoted to creating exceptional living experiences for all of our residents and building lasting, mutually beneficial relationships with our partners and clients. To learn more, visit www.bainbridgecompanies.com.